To find out more about what France's social safety net means to the French, I'm joined by economist Claudia Senic. Now, you're a professor at the Sorbonne University as well as at the Paris School of Economics, and you're the French specialist in the uh, economics of happiness. Now, it's somewhat paradoxical because France is a safe country. It's a, one of the richest countries in the world as well. Uh, it has this very incredible social protection program, and yet the French are pessimistic. How can you explain that? It's true that when you look at objective circumstances of the French, uh, uh, the way they feel about it is really less favorable than would happen if uh, you suddenly took out all the French from the country and put the Belgians, for instance, and just by doing this without changing anything else, the average level of happiness would increase by one step in a zero-ten scale. Okay. So it's all, I think it's, it's, in their, it's in the way we look at, or they look at, uh, at reality, the, the way they transform the, uh, the living conditions into, uh, into satisfaction. Probably because they have a very high level of, uh, of expectation. They expect a lot, they demand a lot. They have a, a reference to some ideal past that used to be better and more French. Now, it's been said that France is a paradise uh, inhabited by people who think that they're living in hell. Would you agree with that? Yeah, it's true that there is something like this unsatisfying. And I think it's related to the transformation of society. Uh, all these things that are uh, brought up by uh, globalization, you know, the change in the way uh, in the, the labor, relation, labor uh, market, the, the way people have to work, uh, the occupations, um, all these things, which happen everywhere, actually. But in France, it's resented, it's felt in a particularly uh, painful way. Mm -hmm. Because the, they expect a lot from the state, right? There's this incredible social protection program. Yeah, exactly. So in France, there is this idea that uh, we rely a lot on the, on the state. We expect a lot from the state. We expect the state to protect people. And when the state is not able to do that, this is very stressful. Uh, and it's, it is the fact that with globalization, the state, national, national states, uh, usually have become small uh, because it affects the, the, the capacity of, uh, of the country to enact this uh, social protection. It's, um, it's a source of dissatisfaction. And do you think the fact that the state is chipping away at France's social safety net has to do with this French malaise that we're seeing today? Yeah, so it's the fact that these um, people of the French are very attached to this uh, welfare system and social protection net. And it's... The, it has to be reformed all the time because life changes and the world changes and life expectancy is increasing and people start working later. So we have to adjust to all this. But because there is a crisis of confidence, every time we have to, to change it, people are afraid that they're going to lose all the things that they fought for. So if they are afraid that they are going to lose the, the, the protection against the risk that they obtained in the past, uh, it's frightening. So the big question is, how can you increase happiness in France? <laughs> without spending too much money? I think the, the, the big problem in France is uh, pessimism and expectations about the future. I've seen in the surveys over and over again that the French are pessimistic, and not, not necessarily about their own private life. Mm -hmm. It's always it's like a collective private thing. life is okay, it's always like this, but uh, the economy, the country, the next generation in France, this is terrible. Uh, they're not really going looking forward to all the transformations and uh, everything that's coming. And that's the problem. I mean, it would be very useful if we could change the, this view and we could have a common collective project that we would all be uh, enthusiastic or at least willing to embark on. What's lacking is a, a récit collectif, a common story that would unite uh, people in a, in a project and, and, and draw a picture of where we're going and we want to go there. A unique st French story. A French story, <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Claudia. Thanks for being <laughs> on the show.